All right, good evening, and I hope you're all well. In fact, it's good evening for me, but it could be any time for you, I guess. So this is gonna be a really short video, just a quick one. I really wanted to just do, push something out there because I've um, been messing around on, on my O2 for a few weeks, just exploring how I can um, maybe use a couple of new projects that I found on GitHub um, via various methods. And I'll put those links in the description if I, if I remember. And uh, yeah, so the history of it is, Look, I, I got the, I, I, I'm massively into um, retro computing. I, I love it. And I'm sure anyone who's watching this video probably has a similar passion. And um, what to say about it. it I, used, I used to look in graphics machines way back in like 95, 93, 95, until 98, something like that. Um, first of all, in my, in, in my, in my uni, um, I, was, I was using, in fact, it wasn't HDI's in uni, it was uh, HP UX. But after uni, my first job, I was, in, I was working in Manchester and I was driving around in my little car fixing um, Novell network servers and such and such. And I came across, uh, and, sorry, and then my boss volunteered me to go to one place where uh, they had SGI workstations. And it was the first real experience of, of Unix in the wild that I'd seen. So I bought... <laughs> Um, there was no Google. Um, you, you basically learn stuff from books, right? So I was going, I was going to this this fix uh, job, and I knew I knew almost almost nothing. So I stopped at the bookshop, probably Waterstones, picked up a book, um, system administration. Walked into this guy's place, and, and bless this guy, he really took care of me. He knew I was green. He knew I wasn't going to do this thing very well, but um, he still let me touch these. <laughs> very expensive computers. I mean, anyone who, who who's aware of SGI knows the the, the brand, um, Toy Story, Next Computing, Steve Jobs, and all that. Um, all all love Silicon Graphics for their um, for their power. Now 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 my SGI is an O2, and I bought this from a, a fantastic guy in the UK called Ian Mapleson, and um, he's he's super famous in the community. I'm sure everyone would recognise his name. Um, so I approached Ian probably two and a half, maybe even a little bit longer years ago. But yeah, but about two and a half years ago, something like that. Um, I, I, you know, we started talking and chatting and, um, and, and he, look, I, no, nothing to be said. He, he's got all the things that you need. Um, so I commissioned him to, to build a custom um, O2 for me. So that's what this camera is showing here. This is right next to my leg. Um, if the cat comes into view, sorry about that. But um, the O2 that he built for me um, is, is, has the, the highest spec CPU. It's got a gigabyte of RAM in there. I think that's probably the maximum. Um, apart from that, it's, 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 all, it's all the same. Got the O2 cam and so on. Now this workstation is not, what I'm trying to say is this workstation is not the oldest, it's not the newest, it's not the fastest, it's not the slowest. It's kind of, I guess you would say mid-range uh, workstation. And um, I'm, I'm only making that clear because if I demonstrate what I'm gonna show you next, then it, it kind of, puts into perspective what you can expect to get out of your machine, all right? So one of the things that I've been looking at is how uh, how the internet is used today. What's the difference between using a modern browser and an old browser? Because IRIX on SGI, IRIX particularly, is no longer developed. Um, it stopped being developed, you know, um, to, what would it be, 15 years ago or something like that. So since then, there's been no updates. Um, there, there was a great, there is a great, a great and strong SGI um, IRIX developing community. Um, that's gone through a few um, changes over over its time, but the people are very passionate. Now, I myself, I joined IRXNet about uh, a month ago, I guess. But since I joined, everyone's been super supportive and very helpful. So if you're into SGI or into IRIX, then I would highly recommend you, you reach out to the IRXNet.org guys and they'll, they'll help you out. Now, one of the things that I found on one of their forums was using uh, or developing an idea about creating a new web browser, right? So a few people were talking about maybe how hard that would be. Java is a big problem on SGIs, and um, so the uh, the idea was to develop a new browser, but it was super complicated. So then everyone started talking about WRP, which is a web render proxy, and basically you have a remote workstation that goes to the internet for you and then renders that web page back to you as an image onto your old browser. Uh, that works quite well. I used that. That was quite that was quite good. But then a few weeks ago, or in fact maybe even a week ago, I was on the internet and uh, on YouTube, sorry, and I was watching uh, the Lunduk show. And on Lunduk, he mentioned this new proxy called Browse Service. And uh, the way he explained it was better than I can. But it was basically using um, old browsers. 
to use the browse service um, can, can, can access the internet. And it, it seemed like it had much more functionality, including JavaScript and so on. So it was much, the experience for the user is much more enhanced than the, than the WRP, um, also much faster. So um, with, with what rudimentary knowledge, knowledge I have, I, I compiled browse service on my Ubuntu virtual machine, which is, um, if I can just pop that up on the screen, where, where are we, where are we? Um, yeah, I have this. I have this Ubuntu workstation VM sat on uh, running on my Mac here. Ooh, Mac. Um, but one other thing that I can do with the Mac is I can push applications from the desktop of the Mac to the desktop of my Irix workstation, and that's what you can see on my screen here. So, one thing I have tried is running Firefox and showing that application on my desktop. The point is, I'm going to show Firefox running over X11, X Windows. And we're going to show uh, Firefox 3 on the RX workstation browsing the internet using browse service. So on the Linux box here, I've got browse service running. Um, I'll just close it down and show you again. So you compile the browse service binary and then you call it with some options. And the options I've got are the listen address is my local IP, 192.168.32.28, and a port. Um, it has to run above 1024, um, I guess, because I'm not a root user, so that's that's the way that has to be. And then uh, this is a, a, a frame buffer, and this is the quality of the image that gets sent. Now remember, this Linux box is going to go to the internet for me, and it's going to render the image of the website, and it's going to send that to my Irix browser. And this quality is how um, how detailed that picture will be rendered on my Irix workstation. And it can go from 10% to 100% uh, as a JPEG, or you can configure it as a PNG. Um, either way is fine. Now, the reason I'm using JPEG is because I've seen some problems with PNG on my Irix browser. And for some reason, the PNG render takes way longer and kills my CPU. And I'll make that, you, you'll be able to see that for yourself. So let's, let's, start, the, let's start the proxy. So that's, that's the proxy. Um, let's also start the Firefox. And when I start this, you'll see it maybe pop up behind. In fact, let me close this. Um, let me close this VMware. I'm going to, I'm going to open the Firefox browser on, on the Ubuntu host now, and you'll see it render on the Irix workstation desktop. There we go. All right. So that, that Firefox browser data, like the application data has been sent over the network and it's rendered on my Irix workstation just to prove that it is coming from where I said it was. We'll go to a part of Firefox and you'll see it's 78.02, 64. There, the application. Uh, and we're just displaying the application on the Irix desktop. Uh, the CPU green is good. Um, if you see a lot of blue, um, that's using all the CPU and the red is wait times of the system and stuff like that. So um, the, the less green, the, the more busy the, the workstation. That's important to remember because when we show you Firefox 3 and the, um, the browse service, you'll, you'll see what I mean about how how slow that is, right? Well, let's just open the X11. So this is X Windows, X Windows Firefox. Let's go to Fire. Let's go to YouTube. Beg your pardon. And you'll see how quickly that works. And let me just move that to the left there, so you can see the CPU a little bit better. In fact, let me shrink that a little bit, so it's got like browser. And there we go. All right. There we go. So let's put that. Let's put that there. All right. Let's start a video. You'll hear some audio. The audio is also coming from the SGI. I've got the audio. You can see there on the on the right. That's the uh, that's the audio cable. That's going into an HDMI scaler, and then that's what that's rendering on the desktop. So that's why the the quality might not be too great. Well, you can see there's a few there's a bit of clipping, but the video is moving pretty well, and the audio sounds reasonable. All right. So that's if I can just pause that. That's the X11. Uh, sorry, the X Windows. I keep saying that. I mean, it's true, but whatever. Let's go to Reddit. There you go. Works pretty well, right? So we can browse the modern internet using a modern browser by using X Windows and rendering um, directly on the SGI. That works. That works nicely. All right. So that's that. And then now, now let's use browse service. So I'm going to start Firefox first of all, and you'll see the CPU go off its off its head when it's loading this. And remember, I did I did I did go into detail about the the spec. So this is. This is a reasonably good spec of an O2, which is in the sort of mid-range, sort of towards the towards the top, but mid-range desktop. Um, you can see, actually, that's that's not too bad. It seems to be okay, right? So it's loaded. I was getting excited then, but I've, I've loaded it, but I've not started the browse service yet. So 
that's um, that's something we need to wait for. All right. So the green is good. Remember that. All right. Let's go to browse service and see how that looks. Now the, I've I've created a host name for the uh, for the browse service box called Vogon, but it's the same Ubuntu host. Let's go there. Oh yeah, one interesting thing. Unlike the proxy server, um, we don't configure a proxy host. You go directly to the port for the browse service, and then it will render an image on the desktop on the sorry on the um, in the browser that we then use to load the uh, the web page. And look at this. Look at this um, CPU now. So blue is blue is me. That's his system load, and it's just it's just totally gone. I mean, not, the CPU is just totally dead now. Doing whatever doing whatever is going on and all it's doing is calling the um, the Ubuntu uh, proxy service this uh, browse service now on the browse service itself it's not normally as it as it as it's generating the web page you'll see it load debug information onto the console and you did into the terminal sorry and you don't you, you look it's not doing anything all it's this this Ceph browser for session um, basically is this so the one seven three four seven we should see that on this one seven three four seven. Okay, so as you as you load the the page, um, it creates a session ID for you, and that's unique. And if you don't update the page, that times out, and you have to reload the page again. Uh, it's a small price to pay. So we're still waiting for the. Oh, and there it is. Sorry, it has loaded. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Sorry, sorry, browse service. I was being I was being rude. All right. So you can see there are two address boxes. This is the original one that takes us to the browse service itself, and this one is run. This image is generated by the browse service. Remember, there's the quality 100 that we put on the on the argument line. I'm going to just remove that address there, if I can, or maybe I cannot. Let's do that again. It is super slow. I, I clicked that, and uh, there we go. So let's get rid of that. I press the delete button. Delete key and there you go. All right, now I'm going to type youtube.com. <laughs> okay, I mean, come on, you've got to you've got to think. Can you use this? Is this usable? I mean, does it work? Yes. Is it usable? <laughs> And on the IrixNet forum, um, a couple of the guys were saying that they found the performance of browse service was better than the uh, the X Windows. I just didn't see that. Well, look, we've, we've loaded YouTube. Let's just choose a video at random. It will play an advert. Um, I don't. I don't. Uh, I can't do anything about that. So let's just click one of these. Skip this ad. Just like you skipped out on buying. Amazon so you, the audio is playing, but this the video I'm did. I'm sure you think you're too busy to invest is, is clipping. I got enough laundry here to hide the sun. Okay, and you can see the CPU yeah, on the top right going absolutely mad. E you just log in, pick a stock, set I'm just going to pause that. All right, so the audio was seemed all right, actually. It seemed all right, uh, which would make sense. But the CPU is going off its, off its mind, and you can see the rendering of the video is, is clipping. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of delay there. Let's go to Reddit then, because that was the other site we chose on the, on the X-Windows browser so here we go let's do that hopefully it'll delete maybe there are some things that I can some uh, some options that I can use to tune this down a little bit but it, it just it just it's just too slow and the CPU is busy doing something and I I wish I knew that what, what that was because it's all happening on the RX boxes and there's nothing happening on the uh, on the Ubuntu node so there's right reddit.com let's hit return let's go to that website it, it will lend it will render and um, that's good you can see in fact let me bring up VMware again just to show you what's happening on the console you can see as you load pages it goes to to the website for you so it's using CRM the chromium um, uh, browser as a, as a back end to, to pull the website information down you can see it went to reddit.com there and then it renders the web page and then you can you can move up and down with the sliders as you as you would appreciate and as you do that um, those those updates are all all done on the you know what I can probably just let me shrink that so you can see it's moving in real time let's just do that and then as as I move this you'll see it update on the console on the terminal sorry as it loads more parts of the page 
or not. Maybe it's finished rendering the page now. There we go, you can see some updates. So you can see it works. You can click on, on parts of the page. Um, you'll get a little finger icon. So you can see it's a hyperlink and you can click it. I don't want to click that because I don't think it's finished rendering the page yet. I think we're somewhere else on the page, it just hasn't loaded it. Like if I click that, I don't think it'll it'll load that video. Oh, Hi, there you this go. Is All Deborah right, so there you go. Symposio. And this is an unscripted news release um, just off the prep. Well, there you go. Actually, that was quite. I mean, that was quite fast. I think it's just the video, just the rendering. I don't really know what's going on. Why it's talking to the proxy all the time, uh, and why the CPU is going absolutely crazy. I'm not sure. You know what? We could try. We could just try CMonkey. What? Just once. Let's just try that. So this is another browser. Um, I have had issues with it before where it didn't render the the proxy, but let's 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 try CMonkey see if the CPU is any better. Maybe I got a better experience with this. Just for completeness. All right, so there we go. Let's go to the um, let's go to the browse service again. Vogon 8080. You can see the loading on the on the on the right there of the page. So it should show the image here, but you can see it, it just didn't. We can try putting, making it PNG and see if that loads, but um, yeah, I, it, I've had problems with this, so let's try it anyway. So I've just closed that down. Let's run it with PNG, see if PNG can render inside CMonkey. So we'll just reload this page. That should uh, do what we need to do. No, same, same deal. So it's not rendering that PNG. Don't know why. Don't know why. But anyway, I hope that was uh, educational, inspirational. I probably not, but anyway, whatever. I tried my best. You can see, you can see that you can. In my opinion, the the X11 render is 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 the way to go. Um, you can you can pull this over SSH so it's secured, or you can just shove it across your network um, direct, and that's probably the fastest way of doing it. So rather than encapsulating it inside of SSH tunnel or inside of um, some other some other protocol, you can just basically um, push it across the network native. And, uh, and away you go. It's fast enough. And um, it, it renders and the CPU doesn't die and it's all good. I think this is the one. So if you want to use an old browser and you've got a Unix box, I would suggest you, you host a Ubuntu uh, workstation image and just pull it across with X-Windows. That's, that's the way to go. All right. Thanks, everyone. Best, uh, best to you and uh, hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.